it is finally cooling down enough here in Texas for it to be nice and enjoyable to sit and eat outside again. So this week I made this picnic table, which seats eight people and has a hole in the center for optional shade. Let me show you how I did it. Since this will be outside year round, I made everything from Western Red Cedar. Western Red Cedar is not only naturally rot resistant, but is also extremely lightweight. So even though this unit is large, two people can easily pick it up and move it since it is made from the Western Red Cedar. I started off by loading all the material on my mobile Arbor Tool workbench, then moving it inside to start cutting things up. Let's start off by making the base of the table, which is made up of four two by fours with half laps in the center to join them. To make this quick and easy, I started by taping together all four of the two by fours, making sure the ends were flush before doing so. Next, I pulled measurements on where the half laps needed to be placed and used a speed square to transfer the line to all four at the same time. I'll be using a circular saw to cut these out. So next I set the depth of my blade, locked it in position, then made several cuts inside my line. And one feature I really love about this Triton saw is the optional laser guide. It makes making straight cuts so much easier. After making several cuts, I used a chisel to pry it over and break the pieces loose. Man, that sound is so satisfying. While working on these base pieces, next I cut in the notches that will later rest on top of the benches. The important thing here is not all four are identical to each other. Two are on the same side as the half lap direction, but the other two are opposite. So after untaping the bundle of four, I retaped them into pairs, making sure to flip one of the bundles so the half laps were opposing one another. Then I made my marks and used my saw to cut out these notches. All right, before moving forward, I stopped to test fit all four pieces together just to make sure things lined up and it looked like it was going to work. Perfect, let's move on. I wanted to add a slight curved surface to the ends of these pieces because they are gonna be slightly seen from under the benches. However, you could just leave them at a 90 if the look doesn't bother you. I used some flexible tape to roughly draw a curved line and then a jigsaw to cut it out. After getting one done, I used it as a template for the remaining boards. Okay, and now to make the legs of the base. I flipped off the wings on my motor saw stand, angled the deck, and cut a few boards. I attached the first one by laying both flat on a workbench and then driving in some screws. However, it's really important that the first leg be on the same plane as the second leg. A half inch, a quarter inch will make a noticeable difference. So what I did was cut a scrap to the height that this beam needed to be so that I could stand it up and have the first leg flat on my workbench. This way I could take the loose leg to the other side and attach it while making sure it was flat against the workbench as well. Same concern came into play when building out the second leg assembly. The legs all needed to be placed in the exact same spot. My cheat to ensure this was to take my two remaining legs and place them against one of the attached legs and then transfer the height to both. Now after attaching them in the same manner, I have two units that should be identical to each other and I can start joining them to each other. With it being an outdoor project, I'm also using Type Bond 3 on all joints and connections since it is a waterproof wood glue. I know it's just two by fours, but I think this base portion looks extremely cool. Wow. <laughs> that looks cool. But let's move quickly before that glue starts setting up. I grabbed a few Bessie clamps to throw in the center and apply pressure to the joints. With that setting up, I moved to the outside to attach the second 2x4s to the 2x4s with the leg attached to it. The important thing to watch for here is to make sure they're on the same line as each other. You can see that I used a level to span across both and stuck it in place with a few screws when they were lined up. I also threw a little bit of type on three behind this board before securing it. It's truly crazy how much of a difference wood glue gives the final stability of a project. Okay, so the base is done. Let's start building a way to attach the top. I did this by cutting up a few two by fours, then using my armor tool jig to drill a few pocket holes and attach it all together. This support structure will not only hold the top to the base, but it will also hold all of the slats making up the top together. After I got all of the limbs attached, I stuck it on top of the base, centered it up, then attached it using two screws per leg. 
Oh, and I skipped the wood glue on the step in case I ever wanted to replace the top. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do a quick stand on it, Tess, shall we? Feels good so far. Let's make a top. Now, I went with the round top because I don't like how on a rectangle table, people get secluded if there's more than four people. A round top on this table will allow up to eight to all be included. I started by making the top by first cutting multiple boards to the same length over at the miter saw, then laying them on top of the base. The intention is to attach them all while still square and then cut a circle shape afterwards. I found the very center board and used a tape to get it centered on the base under it. Then I could use this one to position the rest to be in line with it. Next, I used a framing square to transfer a line on the top surface to be in line with the frame underneath it. This will give me a visual reference on where to start throwing in screws. I mean, you have a wide two by four to hit underneath, but things do look so much nicer in the end if you keep your screws in a straight line. Once all the slots were attached, I drove a screw in the very center of the table. Then I found a string in my shop that was at least a few feet long to attach it to the screw. Now I could pull the string tight while holding a pencil at the very end and mark the table slats while walking around. Once I checked it over and made sure it looked good, I used a jigsaw to cut it out. And I couldn't help but give it another standing on test. You know, a new surface and all. Okay, things are still looking good, except three slats on each side, if a circle has sides, weren't able to attach the structure underneath. And this left them wobbly. It's no problem though, that is an easy fix. I cut a few extra two by fours to span diagonally between the two vertical arms. This will keep them hidden, but also span across all of the slats that needed attaching in a second place. I used a few more pocket holes to quickly add these in. Moving back up to the top, I could now drive in a few screws to secure these ends, and that made a world of a difference. So moving on to the details of the top, starting with sanding. I'm using my large RRS sander with a heavy grit paper to go around all of the edges, not only cleaning up the shape of the overall circle, but also that end grain. Then to soften the look and the feel a tad, I stuck an infinity roundover bit in my router and went over the top surface as well as the bottom surface. Base is done, tabletop is done, so let's make some seating. The benches have four legs each, and again, the main concern is getting them all on the same level with one another, the other bench's legs, and also the four legs from the table base. To make this easier, I made a jig, which is just a straight board that I clamped to the edge of my plywood workbench. It's simple, but what this allowed me to do is place both legs flush against this board while attaching the stretcher to connect them. I'm using wood glue as well as two screws per joint here. When it's time to attach the second pair of legs, it is too tall to use the jig. However, you can use a scrap with a 90 degree cut on the bottom to reference from the bottom leg up to the top leg just to make sure that they're still in line. Then on these two screws, I made sure to make them opposite of the ones below it just to avoid hitting one another. Well, I took the seat base and attached it to the table base. I, and I did this by just kind of flipping it into place. I made a mark on center so that I could line it up correctly from left to right. And then I attached it by toenailing in a few screws. For a seat bench, I kept it pretty simple. I went with one by sixes here to give it a slightly different look than the tabletop. And I used a few scraps to attach them together. To soften the look, I used my glue bottle to trace on a curve in each corner and then a jigsaw to cut it out. I also rounded over both the top and bottom edges here before centering it on the seat base and attaching it using screws. And I used a speed square here to make sure I was attaching it squarely to the base underneath. It's worth noting that since building mine and actually getting to sit on it, I made a few modifications. One was to reduce the seat to only two slats wide. And I also drew in the placement of the benches so that the seat will come out a few inches closer to the table. So if you're interested in buying a set of plans to build your own, know that they are refined and have everything you need. Once it was done, of course, I had to do another stand on it test. And I must say, I was really pleased with just how sturdy it is. And there we are, two days to build this, which isn't bad, I don't think. It'll hold eight people total, and what I really like about the design over a traditional table is people can slip right around to their seats instead of stepping over something. 
This design also prevents people from getting stuck in the center and then having to hit people while trying to get either in or out of their seat. I do plan on adding a cedar color stain to the table, but I absolutely love the beauty of raw western red cedar, so I wanted to leave it bare for photos. If you're looking to build a picnic table, don't forget I have a video showing how to make a rectangle table, but with removable benches. I have plans on both designs, so be sure to check the description if you're interested. And that's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you on whatever I'm building next.